Hello YouTube, Patrick here and this is my channel 1984 and today we're gonna take a look at the socket 4 system the one you can see it's a Siemens motherboard with a Pentium 16 and it's a, it's a working board, working system so from a hardware point of view but uh, we have some problems with IRQ conflicts and uh, the BIOS doesn't really support changing that. You can see close to the VGA connector down in the left corner are some jumpers, but I haven't found a manual. So, And uh, as far as I can tell, they don't seem to affect IRQs from my testing. And uh, yeah, the BIOS doesn't support changing IRQs. So the problem it, the motherboard has right now is that uh, you have your primary IDE, your secondary IDE and uh, your integrated uh, VGA uh, ET4000 the problem is the graphics card is assigned IQ15 and that's your secondary ID so Windows 95 doesn't like that, and uh, so the graphics drivers, drivers doesn't work properly. You can't change, usually can't change resolutions, colors, so on, when that happens. I have dealt with the other socket form of the boards that I have repaired, that were dead, rata damage, so corrosion damage, uh, where the, like the EEPROM and other ships had uh, broken traces under the sockets and so on. And that system had also a lot of IQ problems, but uh, mainly related to the PCI slots. That system also supported the uh, VLB, so it was a VLB, ISA and PCI. And uh, once uh, I, fi I figured out the bias on that one, with the PCI IQ problems, uh, I did manage to get all the PCI working on that board, and ISA cards, uh, I recall, and VLB card. I tested a lot of different cards except sound card and uh, the owner had a lot of problems with the uh, ISA sound card having I IQ problems too and uh, the owner of this board also reports uh, IQ problems with uh, Indos uh, for example so he can't use a sound card doesn't work apparently but right now I have problems with uh, me I tested this in me uh, the owner and I have tested this at this place and uh, we had this IQ problem. IQ15 is colliding because of VGA being assigned that. We can't change that, like I said in the BIOS. I do plan to. We're gonna. Sh I'm gonna show it later. But I, the plan is to actually. I can't disable uh, the second ID. I can disable both, as far as I can tell. But my plan is to try initially to put the hard drive. It's already on the primary one, so I can put the optical as a slave there. And then I could probably just disable the ID in Windows. Then that might, uh, if we're lucky, uh, make the VGA card actually work. From my experience with other, with other, another board, the one I mentioned that I repaired, it also had a lot of problems with uh, graphics drivers once you install, like to the, like from the manufacturer. Maybe not the supplied one with Windows. You got IQ problems with some cards, depending on the bus. Uh, so, uh, so the the thing with IQ conflicts and uh, in Windows 95, for example, is that if you go into DOS, you boot up DOS, start a game like Duke Nukem 3D, the games don't really seem to be affected because uh, the graphics card is like a glorified frame buffer, so the CPU writes the memory of the graphics card and it uh, displays it on the screen through the through the RAM deck. So I accused conflict doesn't seem to play that much of a role for the VGA in DOS. And, uh, and a Socket 4 system motherboard like this, Socket 4 came out in 93 I think, so... The, the, these issues might have popped up later in, the, in, in these systems lifespan. So... Uh, might not have been a problem, obviously not in DOS and maybe not in, even in Windows 3.1. I don't know about NT. Uh, early NT. So, but like I said, my plan is to try to just disable the second ID connector because the primary one has IQ14, so that's not an issue. 
that that one has no 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 conflict so far. Uh, the second one has with IQ, with IQ15. So if we disable that, we can still run one hard drive, one optical drive. I figure of one connector and cable. So that's the first thing we need to do. Then we obviously need to look into uh, like a network and uh, make sure that works. Get uh, a sound card working. Make sure we can fix any IQ problems there too. So that's the plan. Uh, first half of it is list. Let's see how that goes. So everything is hooked up as we left it from at my friend's place. And his network card at the top and uh, a sound blaster 16 at the bottom. And I put in a postcard just in case. And I hooked up the hard drive and optical drive to the primary ID connector. And I flopped it right. So I'm gonna post it into the BIOS. So here is the BIOS. You can use page up and down to switch between pages for different configuration options. So we've got IQs here on uh, wake up events, so as far as I can tell they have nothing to do with assignment. Uh, here we have the hard drives and this motherboard is really difficult on the settings here. The only thing I found that seems to work is standard instead of auto select and then LDA translation should be disabled which you can do a bit plus or minus. Anything else on this takes can take like five minutes so it doesn't seem to go anywhere. It detects the drive and doesn't do anything. Uh, so I had an optical drive on the ID2 connector so it's secondary master. I'm gonna change that to auto select and then put it on standard there. It seems to work the fastest. It gives you a normal post uh, post time. It doesn't take forever. And then we can move on. Mm. Bio shadowing and stuff like that. Serial port are disabled for now to free up power cues. Parallel port is disabled. Because this motherboard has a PS2 mouse and keyboard, so that's, that's pretty convenient. Uh, PS2 mouse, I think this, that's IQ12. Could sometimes cause an issue when you connect the PS2 to the mouse. It, when it takes up the IQ, you can change the order and stuff. And here we got the uh, non set and everything but the first one, and that's because if we have an optical drive, the bias. This is auto, it just doesn't know what to do with it. So. Pretty common on older systems that really don't build from optical drives. Right now it's a snow drive. I might have to check the jumpers and so on. So we're back again and we have a hard drive. And just me connecting the ID connector to the uh, secondary one. I mixed up with was the primary and secondary. That was my bad. And so the other ones were set to none, we didn't see it. Let's see here. We can set here a PCI interrupt mapping here with auto now. But that's uh, like the PCI, and we have, as far as I can tell, just only ISA IQ problems right now. I'm not 100% sure if the ID connector is actually on the ISA bus or not. Uh, so you can, might have to look into this, do some testing here. But I, I have already played around a bit with it a bit before to set the manual ones, and it has had no effect in that case. And I figured like this is a brand name motherboard and computer and the ID is integrated, the VGA is integrated, there's no obvious reason why. Basically a default BIOS settings with a new install of Windows shouldn't work out of the box. But like I said, the motherboard predates Windows 95 so might explain that. <laughs> And yeah, we're running the on track dynamic drive overlay, I think it's called, uh, because uh, we can find up to 8 gigs of storage in uh, BIOS, but uh, if this can't see more than 504, and that's kind of typical of some 486s and earlier. And as far as I know, all, all the S Soccer 4 systems I tried have had that issue too. So this way we have actually have an 80 gigabyte drive. And here is the IQ conflict that we see, as mentioning before, which is annoying. 
and I have tried, you can sometimes change it, like if on one of my system I windows assign another IDQ to a sound card or that had a different hardware IQ, then I could actually change it by doing like this resource thing manually. But the thing is we can't do it because this is hardwired what I can change. It's like nope, it's not allowed. So there's no way to try to change like the graphics IQ or something else. So my plan was since we now have a this controller single which is 15 I'm thinking maybe if you try that I'm not sure it's gonna help usually you get 14 for the first one and 50 for the second one so why is this only well you can try that's interesting So I tried this before, set it manually, now we can select Apparently now it defaults to 14, which is interesting So we'll try again I think, I don't think we have an IQ complete with the graphics for now at least, I haven't seen a pop yet Let's see, primary controller, secondary disabled. Okay, so that thing is, let's see, hard to control stand hard disk drive now available. Drivers, non available. Okay, so the primary is not working properly. Probably could be due to this checkbox here and this is a hardware profile. Let's just do that. See if they both push out fine. Yeah, we have a sentence here. Properties. So, because of these uh, conflicts, and I'm not happy with this mess here, and with this IQ holding steering also getting IQ 15, if I recall. Mm. I think it's set like that somewhere here. I've had it before, so. Thing is, my friend finished the installer for a call and he mentioned that it didn't find the optical drive after Windows installs it when it reboots the first time. I've had it happen, it doesn't find the optical drive, it wants to install other things first and then the optical drive, which is a bit annoying because when you install Windows, you use the, the DOS boot disk with the uh, DOS drivers for your optical drive. So, and I don't have an optical drive here, so what I want to do is I basically took my CD-ROM, put it in, uh, in, my, in my workstation and uh, shared it over to our VM, Windows 2000, so I can copy the CD-ROM from there and put it on here, because that's the intention. Anyway. Actually, I think we can do like this, we don't need all of that. Actually, I think we only need uh, CD-ROM, I don't think we need that on copy. Everything. There's a lot of stuff here we don't need, I think. like this, you can take those and drivers to, don't know, I don't remember if they were actually needed, but anyway, let's make a new folder, new folder, five, then we paste that in here, Because the thing, then we can install Windows from directly from the hard drive, and Windows can load any drivers they want from the hard drive without asking for the CD, which reduces uh, so, uh, such issues. But just off the initial install and boot, first boot, where it wants to install some more devices. 
So I'll let it do that and then we reuse, re reinstall it goes pretty quickly. And then we'll see how, if we have any conflicts, then we have to sort that out then. And so, we have the Windows files from install the CD. So what we're gonna do now is do a format and install. I'm gonna show some command prompt here. And go to decode on, let's see here. Yeah, our files Then we're going to format c colon s slash q slash s will install like uh, the basic operating system of the DOS. So we can actually, if something goes wrong, we can still boot up to c colon and have a basic DOS prompt so we can try a reinstall from, uh, from our d colon here with our Windows 95 if we need to. Q is fast for format and it only works if you already have a valid fat partition and we do. So this should work. Yes, format. And also I entered where I want to install from, so I've done that before I format just in case. But like I said, if something goes wrong you can always now uh, reboot and get into DOS. So we're gonna set up slash is and is just disables scan disk. You don't have to sit through that. We assume this there is good. Continue. So this is a very convenient way to reinstall the system. Like on your own, if you're on a LAN and your system crashes. You can obviously use your boot floppy or your go go tech or something and your CD or whatever, or take out your S, you know, SD card or compact flash and you know prep that on a modern PC or something. But uh, this way you can reinstall within say an hour usually if you have some maybe some prepackaged configuration files like if you have a DOS boot menu or something you can have that zip down on your D colon too so you can have your drivers and stuff saved there so you can. Quickly reinstall, add back the important stuff, and then we have a e colon, a third partition for programs and games for DOS is the plan. So you can quite quickly get up again if you have like a soft crash of Windows, for example. It does happen. I'm gonna go for, gonna go for a custom here, okay. and we need to see the CD key. Serum network sound. So we don't have plug and play. It's, uh, this switch is going to hopefully find all our hardware we need. So we have our 3 com card. I'm going to add some uh, protocols to IP. I'm going to set Windows log on, file sharing, enabled, and next. So it's time to restart then. Let me see how this works out. So, yeah, so now still this is colliding here, yeah, I think with 15, probably, 
Yeah, 15 there. And this thing has probably 15. Why not 15 here? Yeah. Controller properties resources fourteen and fifteen. There's no collision now. That's interesting and nice, but uh, this is all the fact that this thing is colli colliding with IQ here. And it collides with that, and it collides with that. Um, or this controller, or, or this drives here. Yeah. Properties, resources, 14 and 15, yes, driver's stream. Let's just go with only primary channel, like we set out to do from the start, see how that works. If that solves anything at all at this point. Okay, I'm on monitor, so that seems to indicate the graphics card is actually loading drivers now properly. With no IQ conflict. Properties, devices. No conflicts that I can see. Display adapter, properties, resources. Yeah, and that does nothing. And uh, or this controller, primary only, that's good. So we've only got the primary one, resources 14. So, and uh, some devices should be able to share a cube, but let's see, what does this one have now? 15. So that seems to play along. So that seems to solve the problem. So yeah, just disabling the second channel from a fresh install of Windows seems to do it. So yeah, select only primary ID channel enable and restart, and that seems to solve it. So now we have well, because we have network network, so we can. I put some software on this um, virtual, virtual server so I can copy some software over WinRAR, so I can pack stuff. I'm gonna need that zip file. I'm gonna change so we can see what the file end is are actually. Let's just get this over here first. And the only folder we call. Drivers. So this is the Vibra, the Vibra 16X. There are other ones. I have a 16S. That's a completely different card. That was supposed to be a body card, but that had uh, Yamaha, Opel, 3, every, pretty much everything. Uh, amplifier chips, uh, like really nice. Six, some about the 16. This is a really budget card, and it's an an X. And I think you can find them even for like 15 euros. And I, I know most people hate them to the point where they just throw them in a bin more or less because, like I said, drivers. But like the weird thing is, like if you know where to find drivers, like on the some uh, lost they go 64 AV gold, uh, AV 64 gold uh, CD for example. And I don't remember where they got the dust drivers. I think they uh, found them on Vogue or something. But the, the drivers are really easy for dust to use. It's like a single. I think it's a single executable. You can just add a command line to out the exec button you're basically off. We might have to specify IQs but I don't remember. We're gonna see when we when we install it too later. We're gonna do some, some configurations, some boot menus and stuff. So we're gonna have it all automatically set up for us. But we're gonna stop with the Windows driver just to see if we can actually get some sound. Yeah, if, if it install finds without errors we need to find us Thank you. Yeah, so here's the win and the dust. Yeah, so Soundblast SPW9X UP.UP.TC. This is 
is it like a pro gamer run that's intended to run in a, like a 64 gold card which would then find a card update the drivers to like whatever was the latest on the CD the thing is it can update other cards too like this one which is kind of hilarious and this is the ct4170.exe you need to find if you want to have DOS support and you basically just run that thing you can even check the read here first uh, set up first you set blaster variable from out the exit but so I really need to set use the set blaster then add after that uh, ct 4217exe will configure the Vibra 68 with IQ and the maze you set on the blaster variable so basically you set loss, set loss the first and define an IQ, the, the low and the high DMA, things like that. Then when this program runs, it checks the set variable and sets those things accordingly. That way we can actually pick our IQs and things. So it's very common that you pick maybe five and it doesn't work. Uh, you get like no sound in Doom or something or Duke Nukem. Then try seven, that works. So even if 5 is free for some example that might still work for whatever reason on the system so actually not having like, having this easy way of setting the IQs one single command line for setting up the IQs DMAs and one for just starting the, the, the driver is quite simple actually so but we're gonna do the Windows one first so we run this and this should ah oh, it's an unpacking version yeah. And that's finished. Then we can um, run this upgrade update here. Windows 95. The thing is, if we do if we do like a boot menu, we can say only load the DOS drivers when you when you have a boot menu. We have a, like a DOS open option where you boot into DOS not Windows, and then you have another option for say Windows. And then it doesn't load the DOS drivers, so we don't get like a conflict between DOS and Windows drivers that can on some card kind of force them to play nicely side by side but why load both if you can avoid it so having a custom boot menu which isn't that difficult to make so I have a few so I usually take one as a mold and adapt it to another system let's restart here now and see how this works out And uh, yeah, I'm gonna post this uh, zip file in the description, so you don't have to like look, go not somewhere else to look to try to find files. If you have this card, because I mean it's not that people don't like it, and I don't didn't like the card either. But I mean, if a lot of people have them laying around, not you do using them, so why not use them for like a budget build or something, basic, some lost 16 compatible support. Let's see if we actually have a sound card in here now. No, no complaint there. Eh? Well, we have a sound blaster, pretty sound blaster, 16 plug and play. Properties, driver resources. And that was also a good tip. It might not actually work in DOS depending, but the Windows, of, the drivers here you know, have picked IQ513. And if I recall, we can actually change this quite easily. We could probably do it here, but you can probably set, set variable. And always have that running, no matter what. You, no, no matter if you load Windows or DOS. For example, if you have some reason this doesn't work in practice, you can I think you can use the Virgo. You could probably sh change that, up. but it might work. So I think I had to do something like that once on the system with this. But let's get some speakers and see if we can get some noise. sound that's good so then we really only need to fix the dust part of the drivers later I'm gonna check so we have everything in windows we need like all the basic stuff that still shouldn't be there probably Yeah, device manager, see, system looks fine. Sound is fine, network. The IQ is dead on that, I don't really want to know. You can uh, reprogram them usually. And it says IQ 11, so that's probably fine. No complaints. 
So you can, with a program, you can readjust the IQs if you need. So if that collides with something and you have one of those three com cards, you can do that from DOS. Don't have the two sending here right now. I usually don't run three com cards actually. I use what I get, but yeah. PS2 mouse, monitor unknown. Yeah, so it seems like we have everything we need to work. Okay, let's run the setup then. Oh, this is oh, a yeah, sound setup, obviously. Do a 511 on the sound, I think it shows sound FX card. We need a sound blaster or something, something. It should work. Uh, And like I said, you can check what it is here in uh, system. Obviously, if you want to run the game from Windows or DOS, you obviously want to make sure, or tr at least try to get the same IQs and DMAs in uh, DOS as in Windows. But in a system like this, you, the, the main goal is to run everything from DOS, it's super important. Resources 5, 1, 3, okay. Yeah. Good time I checked, I think it was 5, 1, 5. So we need to change this, I think, to. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. yeah. Probably it's the different order in Windows then. So use this setting, settings, voices, 8 bit. Standard shows test the system. Okay, that's not a good start. Sometimes Windows uh, sets up IQs and stuff that you really can't select in the games, which makes it completely pointless. So you might have to set, do the set blaster variable to, make, to force Windows to do something usable for the sound card here. Five one three. Okay. But yeah, I don't have that the high and that's the low. That's the thing. A bit swap those around or not? That's the question. Yeah. What happens if I do that? Is it a stink? I think when you swap them around, I think that's the issue. Because we can't even pick DMA5. Can't pick DMA3 there, so that's a bit annoying. from another system and then just make sure these things add up, have the right network drivers and settings for that and so on. We should be good. So we do that. And I'm gonna change because we want the uh, intro 5 already have they made 3 and 7 here. Yes. So I set the 5, 1, 5. And that type that's the type of card but I don't remember which type this particular card responds, responds to it. I think we'll be fine with this for now of testing. I'm gonna reboot this and see what, if, if this actually affects the, the Windows drivers. I think it does. If not, we might just have to run the DOS too, because what that thing does, I think, is just configure the card. Nothing else. And I think if the card is already pre configured, the Windows drivers won't be configured, so we might have to add. Uh, the program I showed before for the, the Wii for DOS. So on this particular card we might be able to run the DOS drivers at the same time. Because I've done this once before for the same friend thing, I just don't remember exactly how I did. 
that's the problem when you do a lot of business systems on the side. That's why I like to make super fights with just unpacking stuff and things in my system so I have something to look at. And you don't have to remember everything every time something breaks if I want to redo it. Let's see. Should check the IQ settings here. They might not have changed, but let's see. Sound, uh, please. Resources. If I want to, that didn't work. So I want it. So what we do now then, we go to here, to drivers. We add this tool for DOS. DOS. Copy that. I can copy that too. Let's do it like this and see colon. I should think I had. Uh, I think I was. Do I have to do it before now? It's DDoS. D driver. Yeah. You can change the data, but D driver is like DOS driver. Mm, new folder. Do like that. And now so you can paste that in. Now we need to edit auto exec here. So it actually runs uh, this driver and boot. Let's see what that does. Edit. And the set command is go first, so after that then SQL on D driver sixteen X CT4117. You don't have the right dot I think or dot com or whatever, but I'll do it anyway, so we know what it is when we read the file. Try another reboot here, see if Windows gets affected this time. Because I ideally want Windows and DOS to use the exact same, the exact same resources for the sound card. That way, you, the game doesn't just work in DOS or Windows. If you run, if you run different the DMAs and IQs, that just gets annoying. Because if you pull the game over from, uh, say, from uh, over in Windows over a network, and then you want to test it out and configure it, you want to know that when get out of DOS is very likely to work. So that's basically so basically what the, the, the driver does for this card. It's not so much a driver as it just sets the IQs and DMAs. And then you set it in your game or you the game the game looks for the set very very good. So games that usually have like a setup usually don't need a set set blaster variable. But yeah. So now we can now we actually have some control over IQs and DMAs. So when we do our boot menu, we can even have boot menus to set this differently for whatever reason. If for some reason you would want that. So now we have a same config. But sometimes Windows puts like the gives the highest scene. Sometimes the sound loss get IQ ten. It, like some games just don't have that option to pick that. Like I think Doom is quite limited. It only allows like five or seven maybe. And I think some games only allow, which is 5 or 7, I don't remember what was the standard from the beginning. But. So I should be able to control like use is quite important, and the DMAs too. The downloads, and you can see here, set up, let's see, you can configure all the aspects of the card now. Sound, uh, show, song loss there, change, yeah, this is correct. So 16, 5 IQ, low DMA, 8 bit, and the 16 bit is 5. We set them for you. Use these settings. Yes, yes, yes. Test. Can't work before, but. Because the high and low weren't, like one of them weren't correct, uh, it might not work in everything. It's just because they worked before, it was still not ID in here. So. I'm going to choose a mus music card. I think it's some lost obviously. I think you can go general media too for this. We do that and just music. A bit low, but it's, it's there. 
music volume, we can tune it up maybe. We're gonna look into more screen options and tweaks for that later, but right now you're gonna see what happens here. It's taking me because we should be able to just go into DOS now, restart data into DOS. And if this works in Windows, it should work in DOS too. And it's loading now. Fastest uh, ID controller on this one, for sure, that's for sure. Like, the problem with 486 is and like the early pencil like this, you don't have DMA access. So you can look into this, even an option to make on this thing. DMA, uh, and that's a high uh, DMA. Uh, yeah, and then the program ran and it's configured here in base IO 220, MIDI port 330, IQ 5 DMA 1, high DMA 5. Yeah. So, E cool on our thing. That is eight, most like eight uh, letters. You said you never got sound to work in a card in DOS. So if we can get to working now, we have an improvement. Oh, yeah. system my 46 I just like to have don't have to really great performance from uh, but one thing we forgot now and I forgot is that I have no mouse work now because we have no mouse drivers but that's a minor issue. Obviously we have a uh, network to set up in DOS because no network, no multiplayer and that's the whole point. Yeah, so we have 509 network card because my machine has something else so I'm also going to download that. I should have a driver for that ready for DOS. So uh, we're in hardware here so we should go to Nix for network and 509 net and here is basically the drivers we need. Uh, LSS and uh, IPX ODI is used by most drivers, and the actual driver is this one here. And this is the config file, and this is just like a start script you can use to kick it off, so we can use that to test it out. So we can basically copy this one.
So yeah, here is uh, how it would be loaded. LSS first, then the driver, then IPX ODI. This is how you set up a very basic IPX network in uh, DOS. So if you want to play Doom against a friend, this is how you do it. And the LSS and I, IPX ODI are what you always need, and then you have your driver basically. And then you have your config file somewhere here, the net there. So here you make set the protocols. So this is 802.2, that's the type is called. And you've got point three. You can run more than one at once. I think if we look at uh, restore here to unpack this thing. So these are the files that I would. This is intended as a drag and drop on my system. So if I reinstall my 486, this comes from 486 BLB system. We just like drag and drop this onto the C drive. So I would uh, replace all of these files. Plus these folders would be created with its contents, so in my case this is the driver, this is for overclocking stuff in DOS, this is my mouse driver, my network card, this is uh, this extension 2.0 so I can get some better performance in newer games that, uh, <coughs> that use uh, Visa 2.0 like Duke Nukem 3D. And this restore folder, we can take anything out of here and just cut that out. Go to downloads again. New folder here. We can call P no, P60 right now. Put that in there and just all. Just because we can't try to copy config system. And then we can just remove this. So the plan now is to uh, well, I'm gonna modify all these files to fit this machine. First off, I would probably like to try the DOS drivers for the network card. Sometimes you have to look for some other drivers, not always that it works as you expect it to. I have a card that works for a while and then I freeze and stuff. But that's that's uh, not that common with problems usually. If you find the right driver for your card, it usually works. What we can do is we can copy this net folder over to our C drive so we can find it easily. Now we can run that from DOS if we want. But we need something to test against, like another machine. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rig up another machine with some Doom or something. To be able to try out the network, I have set up this 486DX4100. It has a, it's where the, I got the boot menu that we're gonna use. use. So right now it's in Windows. So we can share, we have Windows shares enabled on uh, this machine and uh, the one on the desk. So you can drag and drop stuff in between. <coughs> and then we're gonna, so we're gonna pull over Doom from this machine, so we've got the same version because that's important. And then we're gonna try to IP, see if we can get IPX working in DOS between them. So, we are in DOS now. So and we need to set up the network first here. Yeah. So the CD net where we put the drivers. Here we have the drivers, and we can just run the start uh, net on the bat here. And it should load everything. Let's see what it did. Max export for max sense. So you're coming at link three. IQ ten port three hundred not address. I think that uses IQ. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna find out if this works or not. It says bound to logic board uh, here. So go to the Doom folder. And if you want to go out to beeping, that's the PC speaker because Doom is waiting for me to connect to our PC. That's PCs beeping away. Set the ports 
on our machine. Let's try. Oh, we have connection. Study in Syria. Every weapon. So, anyway, we have that work here working. So, we can reboot and uh, start uh, modifying our bootloader and so on to make everything work. So, we can get mouse targets also and stuff like that. So let's start with this. I need to think, check out here first. Edit. Okay, we don't need this here. In the beginning here, it's just overclocking for my car, another one. We don't need that right now. We can run that out because it's just it's not going to do anything for this graphics card in this machine. I think you can have a the card here, but uh, well, I need to have proper settings, these options then, for that to work. So, and this is not on commander options. Uh, not all of them, obviously, that one is not on commander. Then we've got the ordinary stuff for language and stuff. Since we're running Swedish here, this is what we need. The boot menu is really consisting of both auto exit.bot and config exit, so you have two halves, you could say. So there's like one boot option menu, win1, which is starting Windows, sequel on Windows, win.com. Because the best way to make this work is basically to stop when Windows from booting automatically. So I'm going to first do DOS option here, DOS1. It runs different things. Uh, CD, CD room drivers is the start of the network. So this line is the same as should be the same in this one. So I really need to change this one since so it's a different driver. DOS is going to change a few things. Like I put everything in what I call D drivers, DOS drivers. So here's another menu. A lot of things are repeated. You can make like if statement so the boot menu can jump around to different things to do load different drivers depending on what you pick but I found that people find it very hard to follow so the easiest thing is to do like like repeat options you want so if you want sound in all of them you just copy paste the sound drivers on my machine has an ESS card and this we're gonna have a sound blaster 16 uh, the Vibra 16X, so we're gonna have to replace these options with the suitable ones. And in fact, we're gonna have the drivers, like I said, or that to always loading, so we probably put it at the top and just remove this. So, anyway, that's what we need to do. And like I said, the configs also needs to be edited and to match. So, as you can see here, it's kind of like you get a better idea of the boot menu here, the different options Windows 95. Here is DOS menu 1, DOS, so you get DOS plus con, con mem is conventional memory. It's just like a, you can call it whatever you want. VSA 2.0, that means that I'm lo loading a VSA extension. I'm loading a mouse driver. I have a sound loss to 16 or 16 compatible card. I take network, CD-ROM drive. And you can see I've removed like, the CD-ROM on this menu here and so on. Conventional memory, expanded memory, extended memory. So, some older games need different options. And down here are those menus and what they do. You can see here, see the room driver, but you don't have it on the second one. It's audio driver, more, more to do with the audio, so we probably need, we need to remove this too. Yeah. So yeah. Yes, so uh, let's see. The old auto exec. We have this, this we want, and I actually looked it up. T6 is correct for some of the sick teams, so we're only gonna run that. So, you do want to have this in our new configuration here. Edit. So, 
I might as well put that somewhere. Always gonna run it, so I can put it at the top there. So echo just means like show on screen what what the, it's, it's doing. So this will be printed and anything associated with echo off. Then it won't print to the screen in DOS. That's why if you want to show it runs the command, but you don't want to show oh, maybe all the stuff it prints out, you can turn that off. want to uh, <coughs> not change this we're gonna um, copy and let's see just drives okay. yeah. so we're gonna go to net here remove all of this and then we can copy in these new drivers works for this card into here and we want that driver so we might as well just do that so and copy that file name and uh, place it here or so and we have that on more instances so let's do that we can probably run some uh, some replace everything here man I think it's the only two that uses uh, the network. Save that. Then, like I said, we have added sound support here for this computer. We fixed the network now. We have the drivers, we have the commands we need to start it. So, we are going to remove these though. It's a set blast orbit again, but we already have it, like I said up here and that was because windows requires to to requires to just set the proper IQ station and you're always gonna run that. On my machine have different drivers for Windows and DOS. So I've split that up. So off away with that. Seems like these are basically doing nothing right now. Let's see. Well, they are doing something, but not in this menu. There's no options here. So the next thing to look at is the config file. Config is that's the wrong one. Take out the rest of the part of the auto driver here. And the driver again. And now we can see how high MEM system EMM tier six is used different in different ways to, to extend and expand memory. Should actually be like uh, speed 16. So, but uh, the, the use of this computer, the owner could add something else to uh, like since th those two are the same, I think they are. No, nope, those, those two are the same, and those are the same, and those are the same. Could uh, Add like mouse support to one of that one, but not that one, and so on. The way my machine works, it's that I had to load drivers, so that's why I had uh, had it the way it was. So now we have a boot menu, so we can start Windows from here, for example, or we can just do something like this. So we can load everything here. That will load the VSA. Configure it would load via VSA 2.0 extension, mouse driver, sound loss, 16. Not in the uh, configuration tool in this case, so it sets up the card, an IPX network, and the CV room. So do that.
mm. went pretty fast. I think everything worked. I think. But we can quite easily try out Doom again. And we should have mouse drives too now in Doom. Set that. Let's work say again. And let's set the socket to something else. F10. Uh, so the other machine is ready. It's waiting for this one to connect. And we've got connection. Don't have any sound there, I think, though. I'm gonna have to look into that. Do I have network? So we have sound in them now. I just made a small typo. It said the D driver instead of D drivers. I can at the end of the The, the directors don't call it exactly the same, that's why. Just do a nice typo. I'm gonna show off uh, the VSO support here. I have disabled it though, the, the UniVB driver. It's just a RAM down there. So it's disabled, but I have configured it for this machine now. Uh, you have to register it, and then um, this machine, for some reason, I had to tell it what kind of card it had to actually make it work. But it seems to be working, so. But I removed it, like I said, from the auto executor but using REMs, so you can back it. The reason is we want to measure if it actually does something. This card doesn't support the VSO 2.0 out of the box, so I already checked. Uh, so you can be set to 320 by 240 using VSA 32 frames per second here. I have a few spots I like to do. So this is score. So we have loops at 33. Also worth noting, if you run with that first count, I can check here. I've got 47, I think. If I take number two. We get higher frames, so the actual weapon is effective. So my rule is usually to use the gun and then point it. So in this case I want to point it over there. Then we get in 35-ish, I think. I want to stand here this in the center there, I'll point there. Right, 37, 35. Let's go for 36. Some other VS uh, extension program does some specific for, for a specific card, like S3 cards has their own this support just to it. So. But if you use this pro the, 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 this kind of program, you can uh, go into like the here. 
to read me here, I think, and read about it. So the SciTech Display Doctor 5.3, there are different versions, but I use this one. But it does require to be registered, and then you need to, so you need to run this and some codes. So if you Google for this program, you should find it, and uh, should be a README for with codes for different for different versions. And then you need to, I think, run ubconfig.exe. I think I did ubconfig.exe.c zero for list. So yeah, so, for, so this has an et. 4000, I went with this option, and it's a ET4000 slash W32, I went with the 5 options, so you basically go UV config uh, C5 to configure the car for that, for example in my case, and then you went UV config, uh, no, UV, UVE and the drive is already loaded, but you can see here that it's registered, it's to the file.x and so on, and the serial number. That's not the whole serial number, but you know. So you can see the card here. So you have to do that first before you can actually use it. And then you can use it on the UV. I can do it now. UV, UV, UV. Run again, it says what's on, what's on. Linear frame buffer is off, apparently. You can toggle this on off too. I need to run the setup because to get the most out of this, we now we need to make sure the game supports and is running in this tube no more. So, runtime running 200 normal load. So, I'm going to go in here and select uh, that. And it reminds us that we should use, so even, even suggest the UDVA driver 5.1a. So, we're on the 5.3a. Save and launch. Before I had 23 frames, I uh, lost the stabilizers here after that ship flew by. I'm gonna have something new. This says 36, so we are, we're up at least 3 frames there then. We had 23 before. And so that's like 10%. that on the slow machines like the uh, DX4100 I have with the DAB card it makes more of a difference because you're more limited and then it's already probably makes a difference on something like a uh, ISO system too yeah, let's pick it again I'm in the middle of the sign and compare it we're at 36 before and we're up to 4 now so that's another 4 frames CPU, it would make even more of a difference. Now the CPU is pretty fast still, but because the PCI does it so fast, can actually move all the pixels in its knees. But even then, we got like a 10% up uplift on average, I would say. So what we want to do now is just make sure that this is loaded every time we start, uh, every time we boot. Can go. 
just like I said, I did uh, remove it out of out of the circuit box just by using the rem. Or next in here should be on our first and second option here. So I want to remove that RAM there. So now it's always going to run drivers as DD53A and then UniBB dot DAT. Doesn't need to be there, but keep that out of this. So now if the reboot it should be loaded by default next time. And if it isn't, you we can once start will complain about two point this two point down not being available. We go with that for example. And here it says the card is here et four thousand slash w thirty two install installing the bit about it to be protection mode extension so So the game started, we have sound when probably a mouse still working there. Network should still be working. So basically we have everything we need to play this thing on a LAN now. So I think the next thing to do is actually mount this whole system in a case. 